said slow-mo though. Hi, I'm Dana Pereski, a Lululemon Global Ambassador, and today we're going to dive into proper running form. This can be useful for both beginners and seasoned runners alike. Even if you've been running for years and years, we can all use a reminder. So in this video, I'll take you through some key aspects of running form by dividing it into three sections of the body. We'll start at the bottom and work our way to the top. At the end, we'll discuss a few ways to work on your running form with some key exercises that you can easily add into your run routine. So let's get into it. So to begin, I guess the main question is why is your running form important? And there are two main reasons we like to work on running form. Reason number one is that proper running form leads to less wasted energy and more efficiency. So in short, you can run faster, but you won't be working as hard. And then reason number two is proper running form can help to prevent injuries so we can keep doing the thing that we love to do, which is run. So like I said, let's start with the bottom. What does proper running form look like in relation to your feet? So what we're looking for here is a midfoot strike. Hitting the ground with the ball of your foot or your midfoot area is the ideal scenario. So this will help to propel you forward the most. Conversely, landing on your toe or heel can contribute to injury. That said, everyone's natural foot strike is going to be different. So it really is a matter of trying to work with what feels natural to you. In this stage, the most important thing is that you're pushing off the ground instead of just lifting your foot back up. So what you wanna be doing is using that energy from the foot strike instead of working hard to lift your foot off the ground. So next, moving up the chain is the legs. And when thinking about form in relation to how your legs move from the knee down, it's best to visualize that the main goal should be to have as close to a 90 degree angle from your shin to the ground. Landing at 90 degrees is the best way to cushion the landing and to be able to push off of the ground. Now, when I mention overstriding and understriding, for me, it's definitely something that I find myself doing. Um, particularly in the overstriding category. So I'm taking too long of a stride, I'm landing more on my heel, and to get myself out of this funk, I increase my cadence. So I'm just moving my legs a little bit quicker, and that doesn't mean that I'm running faster, but I'm just taking smaller steps, and often that ends up giving me a more efficient stride again. If you're having the opposite problem and you find yourself landing on your toes with a small stride, with a small angle on the shin to the ground, then perhaps try the opposite. Try slowing down your cadence and see if that remedies it. So moving on up again, we hit the knees. If we're aiming to have our shins perpendicular to the ground, then our knee would be in line with the center of the foot at that time. So when we speak about knee lift, uh, we wanna keep the knee low. Uh, that doesn't mean we need to drive our knee up to 90 degrees, uh, particularly if we're running on a flat road. Uh, we can conserve energy by not wasting it on the knee drive. Now, sometimes towards the end of a run or a race, we might actually need to focus on lifting the knees if the fatigue that we're feeling is causing us to shuffle. We've discussed proper running form of the lower legs. It's a lot, um, but they are very important. As well, so is the midsection. So let's briefly touch on the hips and the torso. Running forward should involve a forward lean instead of remaining completely upright. The hips should be ahead and the torso should be over the hips. And this not only helps with that forward momentum, but it also makes it possible for your glutes to fire efficiently. Now the glutes or the butt muscles are one of your strongest muscles in the body. So taking full advantage of that strength during your run will certainly serve you well. When we highlight the torso or the core, um, so this includes both your abdominals and your back. This area is a very important part for run efficiency. 
and it should remain tight and straight so that you can use the energy that is coming from the ground up. Now let's look at the upper body. What does running form look like from here? Uh, arms are a huge part of running. I think equal to that of the legs in propelling you forward. Arms have the power to speed you up or slow you down. And I find it is absolutely impossible to pump your arms faster without your legs following suit. Your hands are also so, so important. Keep them relaxed. I think it's best if you can pretend that you're holding something delicate in your fist. Uh, a loose fist is best. If you're squeezing hard, you're losing energy and you're probably making other areas tense up as well. At the top of your arms, running this whole entire operation are your shoulders. They operate independently of your torso, which we discussed previously. Um, so some key notes here are you shouldn't be hunched over. Instead, you want your shoulders opened up and in terms of shoulder movement through the run cycle, a right step forward should have your left shoulder forward and vice versa. A left foot forward should have your right shoulder forward. So keeping your shoulders relaxed as you go through your run is also important. They might not start out as tight, but towards the end of your run, you could tighten up and really cost valuable energy. Personally, I like to periodically shake out my arms, uh, shrug my shoulders, just focus on relaxing. <laughs> and that tends to be something I remind myself multiple times over the run. And then during races, when I tighten up, I'm able to do the same. So. We've covered the body from the feet up and all we have left is the head. So your goal here is to keep your gaze in front of you. Don't look down at your feet or drop your chin. Just keeping your sight on what is directly ahead. And this is important because it really helps you keep proper alignment of your spine um, and it prevents your head from being in front of your body. Um, so basically your ears, should line up with your shoulders. So that is a lot of detail and please don't feel overwhelmed. Uh, what we want to do is work on what feels most natural to each of us. So you shouldn't constantly be thinking about form. I think about it periodically throughout a run, but certainly not constantly. And when I do, I pick a section of the body and I focus on that. For example, you might think about my arms when I'm trying to run fast. I am not going down the list and thinking about every little aspect. Uh, so some ways to focus on and work on your form is through strides um, as well, short hill repeats, and even running on the treadmill in front of a mirror. So let's start with strides. Strides are accelerations that are usually 70 to 100 meters. Um, you could also do 20 to 30 seconds. Um, I'd recommend starting with four and then building up to six repetitions and in between taking about a minute rest. Uh, so the purpose of strides, um, it's not necessarily to get in a workout, uh, but it's to help the body feel more comfortable running at a faster pace. Um, so I use these to focus on my cadence and make sure I'm not over striding. During these, I'm thinking about my arms, using them fully. At the same time, I'm thinking about keeping my shoulders relaxed. Um, and it's a great time to develop a more efficient stride. Next is short hill repetitions. Um, so this is a great way to work on your form as well. Uh, what you wanna do, find a steep hill between six and 10% grade and then sprint up it for about eight seconds. Walk down <laughs> or jog down um, and that's your recovery and then take another minute to rest at the bottom. Um, so what I'd recommend here is building up to about 10 to 12 repeats because they are quite short um, and then thinking about um, certain aspects during these repeats. So. What you want to do is think about running tall, engaging your core, pumping your arms, keeping a fast cadence, 
um, as you land more on your forefoot since you're running uphill um, and putting a little bit more effort into lifting your knees. So either of these two sessions can be added um, into your easy run, uh, either in the middle or at the end. Adding this into your routine, um, either the hill sprints or the strides, doing either of those two to three times a week. So these sessions will not take a lot out of you. Again, they're not a huge workout. Um, they're not meant to take a lot out of you, uh, but they will help to strengthen your body to hold better form and to bring up cues that you can use to tell yourself to become a more efficient runner. One more way to help improve form, and this will not be accessible to everyone, but if you run on a treadmill at home or at the gym and you can see yourself in a mirror, sometimes that feedback can really help you make small improvements. So maybe you notice that your arms are swinging in front of your body. That's a great prompt to adjust them and try to limit that crossing over of your torso. So pick an area to work on during each treadmill session and eventually you'll make these positive changes a natural habit. Well, that was a lot of information. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me as I talk a bit about run form. Of course, there is so much more to it, but the main takeaway I want everyone to have is that everybody is different. We all naturally move in different ways and some of the fastest runners in the world can be caught with poor run form. <laughs> What's important though is that you try to do the best with what you have and these little tweaks can be made in place over time and help you to improve efficiency and prevent injury. Thank you so much 